Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another exciting episode of... I've been living in these mountains for so long that... Look how long that beard is. <laughs> Way down here, look at that. It's a freshly washed beard. Yeah, it looks... Does it look any different? I mean, puffy or anything? Cause Lighter, I, I, I blow-dried it. But, um... And the... What I have left on the top of the head, I blow-dried that. <laughs> that took about 30 seconds. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Don't burn your head. Uh, uh, hey, people, guess what uh, our little boy was trying to do? This arm right here. He was. He thought it was a girl. <laughs> he doesn't do that often, thankfully. That's the first time I know of. Well, sometimes when he gets, like, really... Playful and well, active. I mean, we've been up here, what, two years? And that's the first time I've known him to do it. Well, he's done it, I think, once or twice before. Up here. Yeah. And, you know, and it's hot today, and he's like... And we're also going... It's not that it's hot, it's muggy. Yeah. If you didn't hear her, she said sticky. It's And there's a tornado warning or watch or something... On the southwestern Massachusetts, where the border comes together with New York, New York, and what is that, Connecticut? Yeah. New York, Connecticut, Massachusetts. Southwestern border of Massachusetts. And we're under a severe thunderstorm watch. The severe thunderstorm watch. So we know it's that time of year, you know. I just hope we don't get hail. Oh it's yeah. Oh yeah. Well, that one time it was started hailing, and I remember we ran to the parking garage and. Uh, but we're not in Keene, and we have no gas, so. Um, well, we were in Keene that day. It's like, oh, shit. <laughs> and it came down for a while too. It wasn't just once or that twice. That wasn't funny. <laughs> no, it wasn't. I was like, ah. And the only time that I had been in a hailstorm before that was when I was in Mineral Wells. And, you know, I have this thing, like, I'm big and tough, and, oh, it's just ice, it's not going to hurt you. So I walk out in it, and I get pelted, and I'm like, oh. Knocked on your head, huh? Yeah, and I went back inside real fast. Yeah, because it was like dinner time, and we had to go from the dorm to the, to the uh, administration building where the dining hall was. And I'm, you know, and they're, they're like, no, we can't go. We have to wait till, till it stops hailing. And I'm like, oh, no, it's not that bad. And I walk out there, and I'm like, no, it was that bad. I'm like getting caught on the head with a couple of golf balls, huh? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> exactly. Um, I'm sure the birds don't appreciate yeah. hail either. They're probably like, ah, where do I hide at? <laughs> and to the helmet to stick on their little head. Yeah. <laughs> Give him a little motorcycle helmet. Yeah. And to our daughter, I am so sorry your birth mom said those things to you. She better shut up. Mm -hmm. If I get over her, it's not going to be pretty. Um, and She's the one with the problem, not you. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. And I, I like I told you on Facebook, and I'll, I'll tell you again. I think it's more a problem of you're not living up to her expectations. Like yeah. And she's not letting you be who you are. If she wants, maybe it's like she, like you were saying, she wants you to be a certain way, and you're not that way, so she's not going to be nice about it. And like I told you on Facebook, although I don't tend to have that AB part of me as much as I used to, because this woman over here makes me like a man. I mean, what else can I say? Yeah, I never th expected that to happen, but it did. And um, I'm not saying I never have those feelings. It's just not very often and they're not very strong. But, uh, like I was saying on Facebook, when we moved to the United States, and you saw some of those pictures, so you saw how young I was. Although there were no slides from... I think it had to be scary for you moving so often. Kind of disconcerting because you just get settled in one area and then you're moving again. Yeah, as soon as you, you're there, it's like, 
you're there a few months and you're moving again. No, and then in the institutions, it was. I mean, if it was just moving from house to house, it would probably look so bad, but. Yeah, and like on Okinawa, um, the first two houses we lived in were close to, they were in the same neighborhood. Well, I mean. So that was okay. So I'm sure it wasn't huge anyway. No. Even if you moved across the side of the town, it was yeah. maybe two miles. Yeah. Yeah, because Okinawa, the widest point on Okinawa, folks, is five miles. That's not the average width. That's the widest width. And we didn't live in the widest width. That's way up north. We lived south. Skinny part, huh? Yeah. And it's 61 or 62 miles tip to tip. That's tip to tip. That doesn't mean you can actually travel that far. That just means tip to tip. Now, maybe today you can because it's far heavy, it's top populated heavier than it was, what, 40 years ago? More than 40 years ago. As we moved to the United States in 1972, 45 to 50 years ago. So, but, you know, when I was in the institutions, it wasn't settled either because, one, you never knew how long you were going to stay. You know, one day they could come and say, oh, you're going you're gonna to be leaving in a week or in a month. But then you also had people constantly coming and going, other kids constantly coming and going. Staff changes were constant. And, and then you had the abuse that you had to deal with. And, you know, and, and see, the thing is, for me at home, the, the abuse, it was, the, it, I didn't have the physical or sexual abuse at home, but I had the verbal, emotional abuse at home. So did my wife. And, you know, so it was like, what, you know, in the institution, it's, not a whole lot different than at home, so what's the freaking point? And now life with my dad was different. My dad was a good man. I think my wife's dad was a good man also. Um, but my mother decided she was going to be selfish and divorce him, even though he hadn't done anything to her. Yeah, and she used to tell me, oh, he abused you. I'm like, finally I got fed up with her saying that. I'm like, how? What, he spanked me one time, and that was an abuse. And she shut up after that. She wouldn't say anything after that. So. Uh, anyway, baby, you don't, you shouldn't have to put up with that. And That's wrong. You know. Now, let me tell you, um, I uh, spent much of my life uh, trying to get my mother's approval, and I never got it. And I don't mean this to sound mean or anything, but I have a feeling you're never going to get your mom's approval either. You know, uh, in the, toward the end, I was trying to become my own self before she got sick. Um, I don't know how old your mother, her cat's mother is, but she sounds like she was probably very set in her ways, too. Yeah. If, if you don't mind us asking if you know how old she is. She might be about our age, I don't know. Um, yes, we're old enough to have a child your age. Well, or close to it, anyway. He would be 19 this year. He would? Yeah. Your brother would be 19 if he lived. So, he died when he was 15? Yes. 15. So, I don't want you to... I don't know how to say it. Don't let what she says or does to you, like, hurt you or anything like that. Because that's, you know, she has her own thing going over there and that's that, you know, and you just need to live your life and be who you are. And I don't know if she's messing with alcohol or other things, and that could be affecting her judgment too. You know, we don't, like, and we're not talking about you, we're talking about her. Your mom, yeah. your biological mother. So, 
Um, Sometimes alcoholics can do terrible things to people. Yeah. Very terrible things. Look at, I don't know if you're friends with Monica, Monica Hicks LeBron. Uh -huh. And uh, her husband. Husband. Family. Yeah. family. Yeah, he and his family. I mean, I'm glad we don't live over there, but he's in jail. And from what I understand, he's going to be there a while. He belongs there. Yeah. I, I wouldn't mind seeing him go to prison for a few years. I say a few years. I mean, you know. I hope the rest of his life. Yeah. I mean, well, a while. Kick his ass around in there, too. Yeah. I mean, and we've offered, although we can't afford to do it now, but we've offered to, you know, if we live closer to her, we'd love to take her and her kids out to somewhere, you know, like friendlies. You don't have friendlies in Texas. She's like on the northeastern side, isn't she? Yeah, she moved up to like Coos County or her, yeah. I don't know how they say it. But, um... Friendlies is kind of like a Denny's. I can, not as not as many breakfast. I don't think they, do they have breakfast at yeah. Friendlies? Yeah, we've been there for breakfast. Yeah. Uh, they're... It's like the regional. They think more of a combination of things and like breakfast scrambles and stuff instead of just bacon, eggs, and pancakes and sausage and. Um, do you do you have Jim's restaurants in Fort Worth? I know they're in San Antonio. I don't know if they're in Fort Worth. But think of that, something like that. Um, but they're like a regional chain. I don't know how big of an area. Just. Google friendlies, although you don't have a computer, so I guess you can't do that. <sighs> Was there any? I thought she said they had laptops and they're getting Wi-Fi from their neighbor. Oh, because I'm getting Wi-Fi from their neighbor. Oh, okay. Are you doing that? Um, we're not going to really be able to send you anything next month. I uh, hope you understand. It's not that we don't want to; it's that we do want to, but we're $140 in the red. And, and <laughs> yeah, and we have to get ammunition before we can't get it. At least the the two two three ammo. You can get twenty two ammo. You can get Mosin ammo, but you can't get two two three ammo. Nobody's selling daddy it. Daddy needs glasses. Yeah, and daddy and mommy needs glasses. Well, mommy needs. Mommy can wait a little bit. And um, I hated doing it, but I had to call my uncle and. Beg for gas money. Yeah, I mean, he was nice about it, but I don't like doing that. But I would call my brother, but he's officially retired now, and he's probably on a shoestring budget. Yeah. So. And his truck seems to be giving him. No, so he's putting money into it. Problem after problem after problem. Yeah. Now, if we had the money, we'd buy him a new truck. But. I don't know if we can get him to take a new, brand new one, though. <laughs> <laughs> he he kind of likes it when he, he has. He has a Jeep, a, a Jeep Grand Cherokee Wagoneer, which they don't even make anymore. I'd love to have one He of wants those. to have a vehicle that he can work on and keep it going himself. Oh, okay. Thing is. These modern cars have all sorts of computers and stuff in them, I think. But... So if, there, if they ever do an EMP, a, what is that, elec electronic magnetic pulse wave? Yeah. He'll probably be one of the few with, with an operational car, because yeah. it won't affect it. Yeah. EMPs, a little electric. They're bad. Yeah. And they can also be caused from sun flares, people. A lot of people don't realize that, but... Um, and also, I defriended, and the person's lucky I didn't block her. I defriended somebody on Facebook today because she's saying thing about saying things about Adam, Adam Kokish, that just aren't true. Was it an activist? You know, she lives in Florida. She's part of Anonymous. And you know, look, I I I told you the other day when you posted something. What did he do? Um, he was in D.C. I think Washington D.C. I, I don't know what. Oh, it was a marijuana. Um, 420. Yeah, 420 event, and he wasn't smoking anything, but you know they're kind of targeting him right now. Uh, and an, one cop took a swing 
and hit another cop. So they're charging Adam with felony assault. That's a bunch of bullshit. I know. So. Yeah, if we. Cops think they can do no wrong. No. And we're. We don't really get too involved with activism up here. We haven't done anything since Ron Paul. And a lot of them don't really like it because we're so inactive. But. We're not the kind of people to go out and make a big but show about, yeah. about it. So. We're not that. Well, for well, one thing, well off that we could bail ourselves out if we got in jail. Yeah. And I doubt that anybody would bail us out. So. Tornado warning. Now it's in, mostly in Connecticut, she says. And I don't know if, if you're still safe. I hope you're still safe. Look, if, if you get a tornado watch or tornado warning, please get out of that mobile home and get into a basement or something. I mean, we don't, I'm su su kind of surprised that they're having this, but maybe it's flatter there than it is here. Well, I think it, there's a mountain range that it, in western New York that it comes down off of it and kind of create, goes into a valley and it kind of creates a... Oh, okay. You see, we, we're affected by Mount Monadnock, which is, I think, the third most climbed mountain in the world. We heard, was it thunderstorm? Oh, yeah. during the past winter. Yeah. So, anyway, this video is over 16 minutes long, so I mean, now this has to go back in. You see it? So, green oh, my dice. My green balloon finally oh. gave up. Oh. It's yeah. It's about the size of a small baby pumpkin now. It's not here anymore. Oh. Yeah, it's down. Where is it? I put it down here. It's down there. Here. Oh my! It's shrunk down that much. Yeah, and it's shrinking in my my. It must be have a seeping. Yeah. Leak. It still has a pretty face on it. Not as pretty as my wife, but. Hey, I draw. I drew that on there. It's like did the best I could with it. I just throw it on the floor. <laughs> And you know, we got the uh, we did did the dishes and oh God. while we were doing that, I took the um, dehydrated eggs and I put them into two containers. So what the dehydrated eggs the the, the main point of dehydrated eggs is you use them when you're cooking things. Oh, we got to remember to keep the um, packets from the medicine those dryer drying packets in there yeah, okay to keep well you know how much moisture there is in the air up here yeah um very thick yeah. in, in the winter it's not bad because everything freezes but once everything thaws it's humid it's it's not quite so bad since it's not like 115 degrees like in parts of texas plus you add the humidity into that I wonder it, if next month we can afford to get us a lobster or two. Oh, yeah. Get well, we get them at the guy that sells them, and I think they're cheaper than the grocery. He's cheaper than the grocery oh, store. Oh, yeah. yeah. They uh, may not be quite as large, but it's a local guy doing it, so at least we're keeping a little guy alive. But yeah. And he's only open during I lobster season. I think I paid, season. what, about $5 for the one I got last year, maybe? I think so. Um... Let's see. Your, he, your father kind of freaked out when I brought him home. He told me to drive him over to the coast and put him back in the ocean. I said, uh-uh. We're yeah, not doing that. He tasted good. He or she, I don't know. I don't know either if they're males or females. But well, they're, he, he, he or she was delicious. But Yet, I think we should try to get two this time. Yes. We didn't have very much meat. And yeah. I'd probably have to rent the pot from the guy, too, because I think the pot's like a, yeah. almost like a kettle. It's huge. And yes, if you come up here, and I say if, when you come up here, if it's during lobster season. I think it's the summer, isn't it? Yeah, just during the summer. Uh, well, the, the grocery stores have them year round. Yeah. But they're expensive compared to this guy down the road here. But yes, we'll make sure you get a lobster. Yeah, you get a lobster, and they're fresh. You know, it's like he goes to the coast and either buys them or he has a boat. I don't know. I don't know if he 
actually does the catching or not, but he keeps them in like giant bathtubs. Oh. Well, it's not really a bath. I guess it would be like a bathtub. Oh my but gosh. It's more, more square than a bathtub, not the roundness of a bathtub, more like a like a giant square tub. Entire block. That's on legs. Yeah. Gosh. People in Oklahoma, and if you have family or friends in Oklahoma, and you can actually stand there and look, watch him and kind of pick pick one out if you see one that you really want. Oh. Because they're pretty large. They're in running. The water is running constantly. Um. Keep stay uh, hopeful, people, because people will be found alive. Stay, and people are are scattered right now. Your loved one may be just fine and dandy, and you're just not able to get in touch with them or find them right now. They're probably in a shelter or or at a family member's or friend's house or something like that. So plus, there are going to be people who are buried under rubble that are alive, with or without. Injuries. So they said a lot of people are going to um, take them, like, to the universities, to the dormitories. Oh wow! That well, because the dorms are empty, empty now, and yeah. the classes are out for the season. They're with dorms that they're not using. Feels all of a sudden cooler. I wonder if it's raining. Um, like I said, living in a trailer is like living in a Pepsi can. Yeah. Well, I know I lived in one in Southern Illinois, and it was hot as hell during the summer and cold as hell during the winter, and. Mm. That was southern Illinois, not northern. Mm. And I lived in one in the hill country, Texas Hill Country. I don't know how they manage up here living in one. Oh gosh. And a friend of ours was living in one for a short time, so. Well, it was a buddy of his. Mm. I think the guy was out of town, and he was just kind of babysitting it for him. Oh okay. And when we first got up here, we stayed in a mobile home for two or three months, till the guy. With cocoa. Yeah. So I stay on your medicine, baby. I wish we could get into something. We need more space. A house. Get in the king. Get back in the king for one thing, but get away from the college. Yeah. Get yeah. to the western side of the, either the northern or the western side of the city. Cause that's farther away from the college. The college kids don't want to be that far away from. From the, from the college, the university, Keene State University, I think it is. Now those kids are a pain in the ass. We were at the women's shelter, and at night it was like the beginning of the fall. Well, it was weather? just a block, what, maybe two blocks away from the campus. Yeah. yeah. Oh my. They were gosh. horrendous. And it wasn't just that they were drinking and loud, they were just loud. They were going up and down the street screaming at the top of their lungs and yelling and... And we opened the window and yelled at them, hey, people are trying to sleep and they, F you. Like, come on. I think one time the guy who ran the shelter, the shelter supervisor got pissed off and called the cops on him too. And we called once too. For that. Yeah. Because if you, if he would have went out there, he probably would have beat the shit out of one of those kids. <laughs> I think Joe was capable of doing it. Yeah. He looked like a Italian tough guy. Yeah. Well, this video is almost 25 minutes long, people. So uh, I don't know if I remember one time they did get in a fight out there, and actually, hmm? somebody I think one of the young the kids around there called the cops on them. And once the cops fight, the cops came chasing people over there once. So and yeah, I need glasses because I want to read, I want to draw, I want to study. Like the EMT stuff, I want to study that. I can't. I mean, and no, I'm not willing to ask my uncle for money for glasses. We'll do that. Well, if we could just get that damn five hundred dollars that Texas owes us, then we could both get the eye exams and glasses. Yes. But now my uncle said he has everything straightened out pretty much. You know, he just everything's in a row. Just has to like take one or two more actions or something. Texas is just dragging their feet, though. Yeah. yeah. That money. And Cindy, I'm not giving you a penny. Okay. You, if you would have been here, if you been here, if you would have been here, if you would have been involved, 
Now, I would have shared equally with you. And maybe even giving you a little extra. Or, you know, whatever. But <laughs> you, you acted like a B-I-T-C-H about everything. And you refused to help out. You refused to go see our mother. Just go see her. Gosh. Do you think it doesn't hurt me? I went and saw her several times. My wife. My wife saw her. She's no relation to my wife. My wife went and saw her. And you? You can't go see her? Come on. You live in the damn same damn city she does? Yeah, come on. You're an asshole is what you are. Yeah. And I'm not apologizing for it either. Woman. Yeah, um, neither yeah. one. Yeah, neither one of us are gonna say, "Oh, we're sorry for saying you're a bitch," because that's what you are, Cindy. The shoe fits. Wear it, honey. Yeah. Even if you don't like it. So anyway, people don't want to leave this on a negative note. So um, yeah, I want to study the guitar more too, but. I, but yeah, I've been living in these mountains so long, my beard has grown so long. Yeah, right. <laughs> Bye, people.